Pangolins are at times mistaken as reptiles, but these ascari skinned mammals are known for rolling into a ball when danger approaches them. This, however, makes it easier for poachers to pick them up. This shy toothless harmless mammal is believed to be the world's most trafficked wild animal, killed for its scales, for use in traditional Chinese medicine, and for meat. However, no science has proven its medicinal value. To pangolins, they have a major threat. The major threat is um, wildlife trafficking. People are looking for these pangolins. They, in trade, they want to get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, riches. So, the pangolins face challenge of being traded in a wildlife trade. People go poach them wherever they are. It's just because of um, me and a lack of understanding to know really what the pangolin has. The pangolin scales, which are always the reason why they are hunted for, poached for, is made up of keratin like our fingernails. So nothing medicinally associated with the, the, with, with the pangolin in this kid or the pangolin's scales. Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Centre has occasionally rescued pangolins as an intervention to protect these endangered species. We have done a lot of interventions. One, we have done rescue and the rehabilitation of pangolins. Uwek is the only institution in the country which is mandated to do a rehabilitation of such an animal species. So when these pangolins arrive, uh, some of them come with a lot of traps, wire meshes, and then through our quarantine and veterinary procedures, we give them a second chance of life. Two, we have gone to communities where we rescue these pangolins and then we talk to them. Spec to be specific, pangolins in Uganda, we, can see, we, can, we always put them in the northern part of the country. Areas of Pakwachi, Noya, mm, sometimes we are, uh, Palisa, Bulisa, such kind of stuff. So we always go to communities and we talk to them about the usefulness of of, of supporting the pangolin lives. But also I've worked in partners like Uganda Life Authority in assuring that the human wildlife farm, the human wildlife harmonious living is really put at the standard. Where we're coming with issues of legal, legal affairs, if you're fond of the pangolin, as well we contribute a lot to assure that these animals live. When these animals get to the National Wildlife Hospital, Rehabilitation starts immediately. We receive a variety of animals ranging from mammals, large and small, reptiles, uh, birds, among other species. And for such animals like pangolins, they are critically endangered and they are animals that are sought after by traffickers because of the purported value of scales and related things in um, traditional medicine and Chinese medicine in the Asian parts of this world. So when these animals come in, we do health assessments where we evaluate the health status, pick samples and also treat because some of them come when they are injured with fractures uh, and other injuries that they may have sustained while in transit or wherever they come from. So we treat and then admit and rehab them or take them through a quarantine period and rehabilitate them. And then after there we also assess uh, for either holding or release. Pangolins are tricky animals under captivity and the best option is to have them released back into their natural environment. Uh, pangolins are insectivorous. They feed mostly on insects. In captivity, um, that might not be a requirement that is easily met because they are very selective feeders, they choose what to eat. So you find that in captivity, if you keep them for long, you might not get the right diets or you'll keep feeding what they are not going to respond to. And in the end, you're causing the animal a lot of stress, you're leaving it hungry and you could actually uh, push it closer to its death. So release is always our best option. But also, in a zoo setting here, we do what we call we feed the animal. We don't allow the animal to feed by itself. It can be, but of course under inspection. Pangol is naturally a nocturnal feeders, feeding on a lot, a lot of um, a lot of species, especially they do more of the ants. They are ant eating animals. But also they have been seen or sighted eating on other insects. So feeding pangolins is a bit hectic role 
given the fact that uh, these guys are nocturnal animals, mostly active during the night. And given the species that we have currently, which is the tree climbing pangolin, it's really hectic because the guy naturally prefers and feels very safe when he's feeding on and with the experience of our I've worked with uh, over four pangolins, the, the two were ground pangolins. Ground pangolins are easy to work with because they are ground dwellers. Mm -hmm. You can put them on the ground, they move around to get ants. But then the problem comes with the tree climbing. When you put them on the ground, they still feel very shy. When you put them on a tree, they still want to escape away from you. <laughs> so it's really, uh, it's really a challenging fact with, really, with tree climbing pangolins. And actually that's why Pangolin's life in captivity is a hard task. First of all, they are nocturnal. Next to that, they are selective feeder. They don't feed any or on anything. You have to bring ants, and they always prefer grazing by themselves. The, the highest lifespan that has been recorded in captivity of, 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 of uh, a pangolin was kept for 40 days in only captivity. 40 days. Only 40 days. Oh. So as we work, we always, whenever you see a pangolin, you do a rehabilitation under the quarantine, and then organized for release of this family.